Uh, we're just going to take a couple minutes and uh, hit on the only couple things that, time, that uh, Austin left for me. Right? <laughs> uh, we're going to look at five ways in which it's possible for us to take the Lord's name in vain. And we need to be careful that we not take the name of the Lord in vain. We're just five quick ways. We're going to do this quickly so that we can um, get out of here and get home and eat some, uh, I don't know what you're going to eat tonight, fried chicken or whatever. But let's look at Exodus chapter 20, uh, verse number, uh, let's look at verse number 5. Exodus 20, verse number 5. And uh, this is smack dab in the middle of the Ten Commandments. We visited uh, Exodus 20 earlier this morning. Um, but let's look at what it says here. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. We we're looking at that this morning. If you if you love God, you show it by keeping his commandments. Verse number seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now when we talk about the issue of taking the Lord's name in vain, we most often uh, think about cussing using God's name. You know, you know, there's a Bible track that says, um, this is what it says on the cover. It says, in quote marks, damn it is not God's last name. And uh, it's certainly true. Some people, they only think of God when they're using a cuss word. Actually, they use the cuss word and they don't even think about God. And, of course, that's part of what God's saying here in using his name in vain. And to be clear, God is not God's name. It's his title. And yet, it's still his title. It is a holy uh, title. It is something that we should take seriously. And it does fall under that sense in which we take the name of the Lord our God in vain when we misuse the titles that belong to Him as well. Uh, of course, it's certainly true when people cuss Jesus' name and use it in a way that shouldn't be used. Uh, in, in speech is the first way it's possible for us to use God's name in vain. Uh, this happens easily when people just use Jesus' name uh, too much, or use God's name and just use it too much, you know. Uh, and I, I'm sure it started when people who were shocked by something said, you know, uh, oh my God. I'm sure for those people, uh, some people who started saying stuff, I don't know when in history that became popular to say, but I am sure that the people who started it, and we can see that phrase in the Bible, I'm sure that when it was started, it was actually a prayer to God. It was a calling for God to witness. It was a sense in which you say, God, are, are, pay attention to this horrible thing, or pay attention to this wonderful thing. And yet somehow people who use it in a holy way make it into a cuss word, make it into a text. OMG, it ought not to be. We use God's name in our speech in vain when we just use it repetitively and make it general and it doesn't matter. You know, I am, I do think about the Jews, um, how uh, they will not try and pronounce the name of, of Yahweh, Jehovah. You know, the all caps Lord in our, in our King James Bible. Um, and the reason is because they say it's too holy. So we don't, we're not even going to try and say it. In fact, they say it's impossible to say now because we've lost the pronunciation. That may be. But the sense that 
you don't want to use God's name. And so, in fact, today you come to the place where you go through books where it talks about God and it's capital G dash D. Who's ever seen that? You know, and that's a sense in which the Jews are making reference to God, but they're not even going to say God. So they're going to put a dash. Uh, who knows what the ditto marks are? When you're making a list, you put a ditto under. Well, ditto marks came from making reference to God's name, but they didn't want to write it again. And so they put two yods. And that we look at that, it looks like a quote mark. But that's actually two yuds in the Hebrew language. And that's where the diddle marks came from because they were referring back to God, but they didn't want to say his name. Now, if they can reverence his name, why are Christians so lax in our speech when we use God's name? When we um, notice what the Bible says, Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, uh, it says that they that glad, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book was written of remembrance. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Now, if God's name is so serious that he has made a record of every time the believer has thought about God's name, or written about his name, or spoken about his name. If that's so serious to God that he makes a record of it, man, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in the record books of those who misuse his name. That's scary to me. The first way we can use, misuse God's name in vain is in our speech. But have you ever thought about some of these other ways? The second way is in our salvation. You realize that when you become a Christian, you are now bearing the name of Christ. You say, "Wow, well, that's you know, that's not a biblical term to call yourself a Christian." Well, look at Acts chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. Because there are people that say, you "Shouldn't call yourself a Christian." That's what our enemies call us. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, it did start by our enemies. That's true. But you know what? They got it right. <laughs> Acts chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him to Ant unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And listen, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Now that's what the Bible says about when Christians have, uh, started getting that name. Now, people look back in history, uh, as far as I know, the Bible itself doesn't say it, but people look back at the history and say, see, it was the enemies of the Christians who called, started calling them Christians. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not true. It, it, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Whoever started calling Christians Christians, they got it right. In that, a Christian is someone who's like Christ, a follower of Christ. And when you let everybody know that you're a Christian and then you walk like a pagan, you're bearing the name of Christ in vain. You say you're a Christian, but you're living like a hypocrite, bearing his name in vain. Christian, we need to be aware of our testimony, what people see, and what we do in front of others, and what we do in secret. Because you bear the name of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, I'm trying to do this really quickly here because we just have a couple minutes. We can bear God's name in vain in our speech. We can bear God's name in vain by in our salvation because we are called Christians if we don't live like a Christian. But how about this? In our supplications, in our prayers. What are you talking about, preacher? How can you bear God's name in vain? How can you use God's name in vain when you're praying? I'll tell you how. Let's look at the source verse first. John chapter 16, verse number 23. And in that day, Jesus is speaking to his disciples at the end, right before he's crucified. He says, and in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Now, this is how it starts. God gave us the authority to ask things of God. That's what prayer means, to ask. God gave us the authority. Jesus said, ask in my name, and God will do it for you. That doesn't mean you can ask God for the lotto ticket, and he's going to give you the lotto ticket. You're asking in his name. So you've got to be asking for something that's within God's will. But here's how, here's how it starts. So we as believers, we pray. And at the end of the prayer, we have a tradition. And if we're good Christians, we say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now the sad part about that is that that is there for a very important reason. It's there because we don't have any authority to go before God on our own. I don't have any authority of my own righteousness, my own strength to demand anything from God. The only way I have any authority is when I go in Jesus' name. And, more specifically, the only way I have any authority is when I go to Him, not only just in the power of His name, but in the power of His righteousness as a believer. I don't earn that righteousness. He gives it to me. But when we pray, in Jesus' name I pray, quote unquote, we are reminding ourselves as well as acknowledging to God the humility to say, I'm not worthy for you to answer my prayer. But in Jesus' name I beg you. That's great. That's what it's supposed to be. That tradition, that's how it started, I believe, and that's what it's for. The problem is, is that when we get into our prayer sometimes, when we start praying and just we're on autopilot, we get to that end of that prayer and we say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, to be honest, I found myself do that. And I felt convicted of God. That the end of that prayer becomes a magic formula. I'm just throwing out God's name. But I'm not really using it or thinking about what it means. And so I suggest to you that if you are going to pray in Jesus' name, by the way, that's the way all of us have to pray, but since you pray in His name, make sure that it's not just formula. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now some people do pray formula prayers. They get in the habit of praying for certain things. It's not necessarily wrong as long as they are being heart felt faith driven requests of God there's nothing wrong with a prayer that happens to be something you prayed for for before but when it just becomes memory love 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 there's something wrong with it because it becomes something light it's something empty it's something vain we can use God's name in vain in our speech by using His name lightly. We can use it vainly in our salvation because though we are Christians, sometimes we walk like pagans. Number three, we can use it lightly in supplication by forgetting the power of the name of Christ. Da -da 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 -da. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Don't need to make it serious. Number four, uh, two more, we're done. Okay, number four, in separation. Uh, Psalm chapter number 139, verse 19. Psalmist writes, Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Okay, so the enemies of God take His name in vain. And I can't help but think that we enter into that mess when we carouse with them. And when we just are part of that group. 
There's something wrong with a Christian who is able to be such a good chameleon that he fits into those, in with those who curse God's name. It ought not so to be. We take God's name in vain when we don't separate ourselves from those who use his name in vain. That's what David's saying here. Well, I'm sorry, whoever, whoever the psalmist here is, if it was David, the psalmist says, Depart from me, ye bloody men. He's saying, I don't want to have anything. He says to God, I don't want to have anything to do with those who speak against your name or use your name in vain. And Christians, when we don't make a separation between those who cuss God's name and us, I dare say that in separation, we've used God's name in vain. And finally, last point. We can use God's name in vain in service. Okay, let me show it to you. Acts chapter 9, verse number 15, and we're almost done. That, that clock is still lying to me today. I don't know why you guys haven't gotten that clock down to the altar and put a new battery in it so it stops lying. But uh, Acts chapter number 9, I'm sorry, Acts number 9, verse 15. But God, I'm sorry, let's try that one more time. Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, I should have set the, the stage a little bit here for this verse. This is God, this is Jesus speaking to Barnabas. He says to Barnabas, hey Barnabas, go, go over there and get that guy named Saul. You might have heard of him. He's been trying to kill you. Ananias, did I say Barnabas? Ananias, sorry. Okay, so anyways, the guy, Jesus, the guy Jesus says, go get Barnabas. <laughs> Barnabas on the brain, sorry. <laughs> He says, go get, go get some Paul, Saul. Well, he's named Paul now, right? Go get him. And, he, and the, the man says, but, but Jesus, he's been trying to kill us. Jesus said, hey, don't worry about that. He's a chosen vessel to bear my name to the world. See what he's saying here? God expects us to bear his name in our service to God, in our giving of the gospel, in our spreading the truth, in our standing up for what's right, in standing against oppression, in standing against uh, uh, slavery, and against uh, uh, you know the misuse of others. God's against all of that, but ultimately bring them to salvation. And when we who are called to serve God fail in our call to bear His name, I would present to you that we are bearing His name in vain or using His name in vain. Now, I, I, I don't know what every single person what every single person in here, I don't know what every, the purpose that God has, the ultimate purpose in all of your life is, but I know the, the purpose in general is this. If you're a believer, God's called you to bear his name and tell somebody about Christ. And people know you wear his name. And if you don't bear it out in service the right way, I can't help but think that God feels like his name's being used in vain. When we're called to carry that name, we don't do it. Five ways to use God's name in vain, of course, the most obvious is in our speech. But also in our salvation. We're called Christians. When we, don't, when we live like hypocrites, we use his name in vain. In supplication, when we pray without making his name holy, we use his name in vain. In separation, when we don't separate ourselves from those who uh, use God's name in vain. When we don't separate ourselves from those bloody men who defile God's name. And finally, as I just said, in service. God expects us not to use His name in vain because all of us are called to bear His name to this world. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your name. And Lord, uh, Scripture does say that you have lifted up your word. You've exalted your word above all your name. But Lord, sometimes we forget to reverence you. Lord, I ask you that you help us to reverence your name to use it in with holy fear. Not only in the way we speak your name, but also in the fact that we're wearing it, that we would not be hypocritical Christians. In the way we pray, that we would reverence and make holy your name. In staying away from those who cuss you, misuse you, in our separation, in our service, God, that we who are called to bear your name, you've given us that calling. Help us to use it and to bear it properly. 